सो आई एस टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस बुक दिस बुक इज गुड इफ यू वॉन्ट पर वैसे जरूरत नहीं है इट इज बेटर दैन सविंद्र सिंह क्लाइमेटोलॉजी so we did i'm quickly revising we did temperature inversion yesterday there are three types adiabatic jahan pe there is a movement of air non adiabatic when there is no movement of air and there is mechanical inversion और इन द टर्म्स ऑफ अगर एक्स्ट्रा किसी को लिखना है इन द टर्म्स ऑफ द हाइट देर आर टू काइंड ऑफ इन्वर्जन सरफेस या डोंट राइट सरफेस बिकॉज सरफेस इन्वर्जन इज वन काइंड ऑफ एन आइडियाबेटिक इन्वर्जन ग्राउंड इन्वर्जन एंड अपर एयर इन्वर्जन अपर एयर इन्वर्जन इज जनरली मैकेनिकल ग्राउंड इन्वर्जन कैन बी ईदर आइडियाबेटिक और नॉन आइडियाबेटिक या ऐसे भी लिख सकते हो आप एंसर एडियाबैटिक इन्वर्जन इज ऑफ थ्री टाइप्स फ्रंटल हमने देखा कहाँ पे जहाँ पे देर इज अ ट्रेड विंड्स एंड वेस्टर्नलीस देन साइक्ल फ्रंटल इज ऑल्सो नोन एज साइक्लॉनिक सरफेस इन्वर्जन विच इज ड्यू टू द ओशन करंट्स गेटिंग इट जो आज का एक क्वेश्चन है वाटर मासेस एंड ओशन करंट्स का इम्पैक्ट जी एस वाला नहीं लिख पाएगा अंडरस्टैंडिंग इट इज़ वेरी गुड क्वेश्चन फॉर द ऑप्शनल स्टूडेंट्स जी एस वाला नहीं लिख सकेगा क्योंकि वो ओशन करंट के आगे नहीं बढ़ता वाटर मासेस मतलब क्या वेव्स टाइड्स सैलिनिटी टेम्परेचर अप वेलिंग डाउन वेलिंग हाउ डज इट इम्पैक्ट द मरीन बायोडाइवर्सिटी और नॉर्थ वेस्ट इंडिया में वाटर द एग्रो प्रोसेसिंग इंडस्ट्रीज लुक थ्री ईयर्स बैक इन यूर पास्ट ईयर क्वेश्चन मालवा प्लेन्स ऑफ पंजाब में व्हाट इज द स्कोप ऑफ एग्रो प्रोसेसिंग इंडस्ट्रीज एज इट इज क्वेश्चन है मालवा प्लेन्स एंड नॉर्थ वेस्ट इंडिया इज द सेम द स्कोप ऑफ एग्रो प्रोसेसिंग इंडस्ट्रीज और बाकी क्वेश्चंस वेर वेरी इजी देन वी हैव द थर्ड काइंड ऑफ इन्वर्जन दैट इज द वैली इन्वर्जन नॉन एडविक्शनल is thermal and ground inversion and mechanical is either due to subsidence of air at dry adiabatic lapse rate or the convective uplift of an air fine when the air is rise this goes up convectively and then either when it comes down at the dry adiabatic lapse rate clear coming to the quick understanding coming to what are known as the pressure belts of the world so we have some pressure belts of the world which is known as the equatorial low pressure belt between 5 degree north and 5 degree south then we have the subtropical high pressure belt or the horse latitude between 30 to 35 degree north and 30 to 35 degree south then we have the subpolar low pressure belt between 60 to 65 degree north and 60 to 65 degree south and then we have the polar high pressure belt so 30 to 35 degree north 60 to 65 degree north 90 degree north 30 to 35 degree south 60 to 65 degree south and 90 degree to the south this equatorial low pressure belt is known as the belt of doldrums or calm conditions this equatorial low pressure belt is also known as itcz it is an example of thermally induced pressure belt it is an example of thermally induced pressure belt fine this pressure belt is dynamically induced high pressure belt due to subsidence of air and isko hum kahenge horse latitudes this pressure belt is the belt of fronts and this pressure belt is the again 
a high pressure belt due to extremely cold climate. So the air that rises from the equator, side view, due to the tropops pause here, it goes into some other direction. Ideally, this air should go and settle over the poles, but it becomes very cold, its density increases, and therefore it settles downwards, resulting into formation of a polar high pressure belt. So, uh, sorry, subtropical high pressure belt. Fear it starts flowing towards the equator on the surface as trade winds. In the northern hemisphere, it is going to get deflected to the right, and in the southern hemisphere, it is going to get deflected to the left, and it starts flowing as the trade winds, yeah, easterlies. Then they both join at this, and because of the low pressure, ye upar utti hai. We call this as a ITCZ. Fine. Similarly, air from this region. Because of the descent of the air here, here se aegi air, air from this region starts flowing towards the polar, subpolar regions. Yahan pe aake garam hoti hai, so it starts rising upwards and it goes back, completes the another cell. And again, it settles down from here, starts flowing on the surface as easterlies because they will get deflected to the left, and yahan pe aake rise hoti hai and it completes a circle. Because these two are high pressure belts, where air is forced to descend, automatically beach mein there is a low pressure belt and therefore warm westerly winds will go from this place to this place. That is, they will get deflected to the right and I say like the west to east ja rahi hai. They will get deflected to the left in southern hemisphere, I say like the west to east ja rahi hai. Therefore, we will call them as westerlies. It will rise up and then it will come and settle down. It will rise up due to fronts and it will come and settle down. Here there is a jet stream, here there is a jet stream, here there is a jet stream, here there is a jet stream. This model which I have drawn is known as Tricellular meridional circulation of winds. Yeah, it is known as Hadley, Ferrell, and Polar, polar cell. Clear with this? Clear with the wind pattern? Any doubts here? Dheere dheere or cover ho jayega, why it is moving here, kaise jari hai winds, but this is what is the overall understanding of the subject on the winds. Yaha ta clear hai sab kuch? Should I proceed? So, tell me, question aata hai, write a short note on Hadley cell, kya likho ge? Easterlies or Westerlies? Question Atta on the Hadley cell. Which is Hadley cell? This is Hadley cell. This is Feral cell. Why is it not an easy question? you are going to write. Write a short note on Hadley cell. Start karo, kyu hawa upar ja rahi hai. Phir. So, sabse pehle introduction mein Hadley cell kahan pe hai? Between 
equator to the 35 degrees. That is, can I say the wind pattern and the air circulation? Wind pattern likhoge ya air circulation likhoge? The air circulation in the tropics, because wind to sirf ye hai. The air circulation in the tropics, in the form of both convection and advection, in is known as was discovered by Sir Hadley, and therefore it is known as Hadley cell. This was against the idea of single cell model. कल का लेक्चर सिंगल सेल मॉडल ये ये हवा ऊपर जाएगी एंड ये सेटल होगी एंड देर विल बी विंड्स इट वाज अगेंस्ट द आइडिया ऑफ द सिंगल सेल मॉडल व्हिच वाज प्रपाउंडेड बिफोर सर हैडले इन दिस एज द इक्वेटोरियल रीजंस रिसीव इंसुलेशन थ्रू आउट द ईयर एंड मोस्ट ऑफ द इंसुलेशन इज ये है चीजें व्हाई वी हैव स्टडीड द अदर टॉपिक्स एंड बिकॉज़ द सन रेज आर मोर और लेस वर्टिकल थ्रू आउट द ईयर ईयर देयरफॉर दिस रीजन इज थर्मली इंड्यूस्ड लो प्रेशर बेल्ट थर्मली इंड्यूस्ड मींस ड्यू टू हीटिंग as a result of this air from the equator rises upwards due to the convectional currents this rise of the air from the equator is a daily phenomena which results into 4 o'clock rainfall in the equator this air after rising upwards gets bifurcated into two parts and goes towards the poles the air which moves polewards becomes colder and hence denser this denser air is forced to sink between 30 to 35 degree latitudes resulting into formation of subtropical high pressure belt the air which sinks then flow starts flowing as trade winds and due to the coriolis force they get deflected to the right and left and hence they are known as easterlies because they feel from they moving from east to west this winds after coming near the equator they co converge and rise up and hence the equatorial low pressure belt is also known as itcz getting it asane fine same with feral cell same with polar cell main likhaunga don't worry i'll make you write this thoda technical language mein but understanding what is the cell so khud ke language mein bhi likh sakte ho even if you are not studied so quickly two three points regarding the pressure belts the earth is divided into the earth is divided into the earth is divided into different pressure belts different pressure belts and this pressure belts this pressure belts are formed due to thermal differences or temperature differences are formed due to temperature differences comma rotation of the earth as well as the coriolis force as well as the coriolis force as well as the coriolis force the general distribution of the pressure belts is shown with isobars general distribution of the pressure belts is shown with the help of isobars and there is an alternating pattern of there is an alternating pattern of high and low pressure belts high and low pressure belts giving rise to three number 3 three thermally induced pressure belts three thermally induced pressure belts kaun se hai three thermally induced two polar high pressure belt and one equatorial low pressure belt and four dynamically induced pressure belts 
four dynamically induced pressure belts. Three thermally induced pressure belts and four dynamically induced pressure belts. Understanding? So, what are the four dynamically induced? Two subtropical high pressure build, another southern hemisphere, ka, ek southern hemisphere, ka. two subpolar low pressure build, another hemisphere, ka, ek southern hemisphere. Ka. These are the four dynamically induced pressure build. Kuch nahi, as it is GS, ka hai, sirf language dekho. just see the way we approach in optional. Bata diya first statement mein Coriolis force bhi hai, bata diya first statement mein rotation of the earth bhi hai, bata diya first statement mein thermal temperature differences bhi hai, fine. Bata diya specifically kitne pressure belts hai, usme se kitne thermally induced hai, kitne dynamically induced hai, fine. So, jab bhi aoge, aega, thoda aise likhna technically, don't try to with GS ka answer, otherwise aage kuch bhi nahi hai, GS ka answer, GS jaise marks pe lenge. Fine. Aaj ka paper jo hai water currents and ocean, ocean currents and water masses ka kis koi bhi likhega mixing, koi likhega upwelling, koi likhega ki nutrient exchange or sab usko achhe marks milenge. But wohi answer agar same kal matlab optional mein aata hai aur aapne yehi likha mention nahi kiya downwelling, mention nahi kiya growth of corals, mention nahi kiya nutrient exchange, you will not get the marks. Fine. There has to be a bit technical. You have to mention maybe Ekman spiral in this. Water masses are moved by the Ekman spiral. Getting it? And you can draw this diagram. No need of adding these points. Ye sab mat likho. Can I continue? Equatorial low pressure belt. Kya kya likho ga isme? Doldrums, ITCZ, thermally induced. S some extra things which should reflect in the optional answer, which shows that you understand the subject more. So what are these extra things other than GS? One, 
he, the extension of the equatorial low pressure belt is more prominent in the northern hemisphere than the southern hemisphere because oceanography yaad rakho the northern oceans are hotter than the southern oceans why because they are more connected to the land ye aana hi chahiye answer mein second itcz is imaginarily connected to the sun matlab sun jaise shift hoga वैसे तो आई टी सी जेड विल शिफ्ट टू द नॉर्थ एंड साउथ एंड इसीलिए आई टी सी जेड एक्सटेंड्स टू द मानसून लैंड्स ऑफ एशिया ड्यूरिंग द समर सॉल्स ये सब एक्स्ट्रा पॉइंट्स है आई डिक्टेट दिस इन द पॉइंट्स कैन आई कंटिन्यू Height should go on decreasing. Yeah, फिर ये बनाओ ये मत। अगर बना रहे हो, तो it make sure that height goes on decreasing. Remember, this is troposphere. Tropopause. उसके बाद दिस इज द स्टेटोस्फियर उसके बाद दिस इज द मेसोस्फियर हाइट ऑफ द ट्रोपोपॉज इज ओनली एट किलोमीटर हियर इट इज एटीन किलोमीटर्स इट इज ट्वेल्व किलोमीटर्स हाइट गोज ऑन डिक्रीजिंग ये मत बनाओ डोंट मेक इट इट विल बहुत खिचड़ी लगेगी फिर Should I continue? Doldrums or equatorial low pressure belt. Tell me, thermally induced or dynamically induced? Thermally induced. So first, first point, thermally induced because of maximum insulation. Because maximum insulation. is available throughout the year in the equatorial regions is available throughout the year in the equatorial regions hence the pressure hence the average pressure is less than वन जीरो वन थ्री मिली बार्स इज लेस देन वन जीरो वन थ्री मिली बार्स ये है एवरेज प्रेशर वन जीरो वन थ्री मिली बार्स ये वन जीरो थ्री फाइव मिली बार्स ये हम पढ़ते ही है जीएस में भी एवरेज सी लेवल प्रेशर इज वन जीरो वन थ्री टू वन जीरो थ्री फाइव आपको सिर्फ बताना है कि इट इज लेस देन वन जीरो वन थ्री मिली बार्स बिकॉज बिकॉज द हीटेड एयर एक्सपांड्स heated air expands becomes lighter and rises up rises up in the form of convectional currents in the form of convectional currents giving huge amount of latent energy matlab latent heat giving huge amount of latent heat jaise hi air jayegi latent heat and equatorial regions mein land mass kam hai wegener ki theory yaad rakho polar fleeting force There was some controversy ki polar fleeting force क्यू I told you rotation of the earth. I don't know whether you remember it or not. Rotation of the earth, 
polar, isne kaha tha Wegener ne ki it is rotation of the earth gives rise to the polar flitting force. Humne uska controversy bhi likha tha ki if rotation of the earth is responsible for the polar flitting force, then all the continents should be near the equator. Because sabse zada it should be near the equator, but वैसा नहीं है. Most of the continents are away from the equator. Equator region पे landmass बहुत कम है. Fine. So giving rise to latent heat or latent energy, making this region warm and moist. Making this region warm and moist. Making this region warm and moist. Next point. The equatorial low pressure trough. Now, why the word is trough? Trough means the belt of low pressure. जहाँ से हवा ऊपर जा रही है. What is meaning English meaning of word trough? Trough means जो depression है. Fine. So, equator पे हम trough क्यों कहते हैं? Because Sides pe there is a high pressure, high pressure and center me over the equator there is a low pressure. So therefore we use the word trough. The equatorial low pressure trough extends more to the north, extends more to, to the north. Yaad rakhna oceanography, northern hemisphere is more hot, extends more to the north. And this trough. And this trough is tied with sun. Trough is tied with position of sun. Tied with the position of sun. And hence it shifts. It shifts either northwards or southwards. It shifts either northwards or southwards during the summers and winters respectively. During the summers and winters respectively. During the summers and the winters respectively. Giving rise to Monsoon type of climate, giving rise to the monsoon type of climate. A diagram draw करने की जरूरत नहीं, I'm just showing you. This is the equator. This is the tropic of Cancer. This is the tropic of Capricorn. अब when the sun is over the tropic of Cancer in the month of June, ये पूरा ITCZ ऐसे shift होगा north की तरफ. So this is the June position of ITCZ. And when the sun is in the southern hemisphere in the month of December, ye pura ITCZ will shift southwards. This is the Jan ITCZ. And you can see Australia may beach me upar chala gaya hai. Reason is remember oceanography, cold ocean currents. Fine, so this region does not become very hot. Yahan pe niche aya hai, remember oceanography, warm ocean currents. Getting it? So this is what is the, this is the ITCZ ka original position. This is the month in the June and so, here when it is there, low pressure is over India. So, therefore, winds are towards India in the form of southwest monsoon winds. And when the ITCZ is over Australia, abhi recently, jo ho hai, winds are going towards ITCZ in the northeast monsoon winds. Coriolis force, right could deflect karti hai. Left, southern hemisphere mein left ko deflect karti hai. Coriolis force left ko deflect kar rahi hai, northern hemisphere mein right ko deflect kar rahi hai. This is what is monsoon. Fine. Yahan se bhi monsoon, 
यहां से भी मानसून एंड रिमेंबर जब अलिनो होता है तो ये पार्ट वीक हो जाता है इसलिए ट्रॉट से नहीं लिया दिस पार्ट बिकम्स वीक जब नॉर्मल कंडीशन है दिस इज हाई प्रेशर वेन अलिनो इज देयर इवन दिस इज अ लो प्रेशर सो ये गायब हो जाता है जो सेंटर की दो लाइन है ये गायब हो जाएगी एंड देर फोर वी से मानसून हैज बिकम वीक गेटिंग इट नेक्स्ट पॉइंट इट इज अ जोन ऑफ कन्वर्जेंस of trade winds it is a zone of convergence of the trade winds and hence known as itcz but the winds in this zone but the winds in this zone are very light are very light and variable and variable therefore therefore this region is known as belt of doldrums this region is known as the belt of doldrums this region is known as the belt of doldrums known as the belt of doldrums in the belt of doldrums in the belt of doldrums during the summer season light winds blow from west to east light winds blow from west to east light winds blow from west to east known as known as we will do this separately equatorial westerlies known as equatorial westerlies hmm nahi na ye exception hai isliye maine kaha ye alag se padhenge hum ye exceptions hai equatorial westerlies west to east is ka equatorial westerly ye sirf monsoon samay ke samay chalti hai and is ye exceptions hai fine ye जनरलाइजेशन नहीं है ये ऑब्वियसली जीएस में नहीं पढ़ाया है कोई नहीं पढ़ाएगा किसी भी क्लास में नहीं पढ़ाएंगे इक्वेटोरियल वेस्टर्लीज इक्वेटोरियल वेस्टर्लीज इज प्रॉपरली ऑप्शनल वाला टॉपिक इट वाज डिस्कवर्ड बाय थ्रेवार था दिज आर लाइट विंड्स विच ब्लो फ्रॉम इंडो पैसिफिक डोल्ड्रम टू द एशियाटिक डोल्ड्रम्स दिस आर द विंड्स वेन अंडरस्टैंड लिखो कुछ भी मत दिस आर द विंड्स वेन द नॉर्मल मॉनसून विंड्स क्रॉस द इक्वेटर समटाइम्स सम ऑफ द विंड्स टर्न फ्रॉम वेस्ट टू ईस्ट और इनको हम कहेंगे इक्वेटोरियल वेस्टर्लीस दे आर मोर और लेस रिलेटेड टू द काउंटर इक्वेटोरियल करंट विच इज जनरेटेड विच चेंज इज उसका डायरेक्शन फाइन इक्वेटोरियल वेस्टर्लीस काउंटर इक्वेटोरियल करंट एंड काउंटर इक्वेटोरियल करंट हमेशा नहीं होता है इंडियन ओशन में इसलिए हमने लिखा समटाइम्स नहीं तो जनरल क्या है सर्कुलेशन ईस्ट टू वेस्ट बट यहाँ पे इन द मानसून लैंड देर इज वेस्ट टू ईस्ट दिस आर वॉट आर द इक्वेटोरियल वेस्टर्लीज कभी कभी इक्वेटोरियल वेस्टर्लीज बिकम सो लार्ज वेस्टर्लीज मतलब क्या है विंड इज ब्लोइंग फ्रॉम वेस्ट टू ईस्ट दे बिकम सो लार्ज दैट दे कम टू इंडिया साउथ वेस्ट मानसून विंड इक्वेटोरियल वेस्टर्लीज मतलब अ स्मॉल पार्ट ऑफ साउथ वेस्ट मानसून विंड वेस्ट टू ईस्ट आ रही है Fine. That is the equatorial westerlies. It has to do with the shifting of ITCZ. Next, this belt of doldrums. This belt of doldrums.
is more pronounced in Indian Ocean, is more pronounced in the Indian Ocean because, because of dominance of the warm water in the North Indian Ocean, because of the dominance of warm waters in the North Indian Ocean. This warm waters in the North Indian Ocean. Understanding there is no cold current. This zone of dominance of doldrums. This zone of dominance of doldrums is known as Indo-Pacific doldrum region. Indo-Pacific doldrum region which extends from which extends from west of Africa west of Africa to the western coast of Central America to the western coast of Central America. Matlab, ye pure region mein there is a dominance of doldrums, which is known as an Indo Pacific doldrum, west of Africa to the western coast of Central America. Ab thoda aage ka samjo cheeze. Everything because in the climate, unlike geomorphology, is related. Sometimes during the summer season, this Indo Pacific doldrum mein there is a variation in the temperatures. The western part of this Indo Pacific doldrum becomes very, very warm. The western part of this Indo-Pacific doldrum becomes very, very warm in the summer season and this is called positive Indian Ocean Dipole. Why it is positive? Because if this is warm, then there will be more rainfall in India. Jitna zada ye western part is warm, utna more evaporation. Jitna more evaporation, utna more winds from all these regions will be attracted towards this low pressure. They will become moist. और यहाँ पे आने के बाद दे देखेंग, वो देखेंगे कि this landmass is still more warmer, so they will be attracted towards India. Sometimes ये region थोड़ा ठंडा हो जाता है, and it is known as negative Indian Ocean dipole. During this time when there is a negative Indian Ocean dipole, यहाँ पे ये ठंडा है, बाकी का part गरम है, so winds यहाँ से Australia की तरफ जाती है, and therefore it results into droughts in India. Understanding the relationship between the positive and negative Indian Ocean Dipole. So, abhi ke liye positive Indian Ocean Dipole will give good rainfall or bad rainfall to India. Good rainfall. Negative Indian Ocean Dipole, bad rainfall. Positive Indian Ocean Dipole means Western Arabian Sea or Western Indian Ocean is warmer. Negative Indian Ocean Dipole means Western Indian Ocean is cooler. If this is warm, winds come to India. If this is cool, winds go away from India. Fine. Wind will follow high pressure to high pressure to low pressure. अगर ये cool है मतलब ये high pressure पे है. So कहाँ पे wind जाएगी? किसी और जगह. वो India की तरफ नहीं आएगी. Because ये पूरा Arabian Sea ठंडा होता है. And this is the more important factor which was discovered in 1997, which plays more important role than El Nino, La Nina. And remember, it has nothing to do with El Nino and La Nina. El Nino is an independent phenomenon of Southern Pacific. Indian Ocean Dipole is an independent phenomenon of Central and Northern Indian Ocean. No relation in here. Getting it? Understood doldrums? Fine. What is the doubt? Thanda means cold. Negative Indian Ocean Dipole, this is cooler. Means thanda. You have not seen the ad thanda matlab coca cola. <laughs> so what do you use? Coca cola is a cold drink, fine. And during the positive Indian Ocean dipole, this is warm. So when this is cool, this entire region is high pressure. So this is cool. Somewhere else it is warm. So the winds instead of coming to India, come here. When this is warm, winds come towards India and they are deflected by Coriolis force towards India. 
as of now just remember positive indian ocean dipole good monsoon negative indian ocean dipole droughts understood doldrums so understood don't write at all like gs aane do ye sab technical cheeze indo pacific doldrum or so and baki equatorial west subtropical high pressure belt subtropical high pressure belt subpolar low pressure belt wo gse hai usme koi zyada ye nahi isliye look at the past year questions jitne bhi questions aaye hai on the pressure belt it is only on doldrums because they expect that you write your answer in proper manner and then we have the between 30 to 35 degree north and south of the equator between 30 to 35 degree north and south of the equator this region is this region is dynamic induced high pressure belt dynamically produced high pressure belt because of sinking and settling of air from higher latitudes sorry higher altitude from above full stop the air that rises over the equator the air that rises over the equator starts flowing to polewards starts flowing polewards as anti trades trade wind ke opposite direction mein jo flow kar rahi hai that is anti trade as anti trades i'll come to the diagram this is the direction of the trade winds this is the direction of the anti trade winds fine this why the trade winds is getting deflected to the right hand side coriolis force because it is coming in this way and it is going to get deflected to the right hand side ab anti trade is going in this manner the way you are facing right trade wind is coming in the way i am facing anti trade wind is facing you the aapke direction mein so what is your right hand side this so anti trades ke upar bhi coriolis force act karega and wo kis direction mein jayenge exactly opposite to the direction of the trade winds matlab this way so anti trades are also known by a different name as or upper air or upper level westerlies अपर लेवल वेस्टरली एंड थोड़ा दिमाग लगाओ यही अपर लेवल वेस्टरली बहुत ज्यादा घूमेगा तो इट बिकम सब ट्रॉपिकल वेस्टरली जेट स्ट्रीम जेट स्ट्रीम ऑलवेज फ्लोस फ्रॉम वेस्ट टू ईस्ट जिनका जीएस हुआ है एटलीस्ट दे विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड सब ट्रॉपिकल वेस्टरली जेट स्ट्रीम इट स्टार्ट एज अ अपर लेवल वेस्टरली गेटिंग इट एंटी ट्रेड्स और अपर लेवल वेस्टरली 
due to cooling becomes denser and subsides. And subsides. Next point. The subtropical high pressure belt the subtropical high pressure belt is permanent over the oceans is permanent over the oceans but there is variation in the size of this belt but there is variation in the size of this belt over the land masses. Variation in the size of this belt over the land masses. Over the land masses. Understanding? This may mean ki high pressure belt is permanent kaha pe hai? Oceans pe. Aisa equatorial low pressure belt pe nahi tha. It is a permanent belt. So, its position shift होता है। यहाँ पे ये disappear होता है। यहाँ पे lands पे कभी disappear होता है, कभी आता है। For example, right now, जो the location we are, 25 to 35 degree latitudes, is horse latitudes. But India के ऊपर it disappears during the southwest monsoon season. Fine? Therefore, we get rainfall. Otherwise, high pressure में there should not be rainfall. Getting it? This is what the meaning of the statement is. It is permanent only over the oceans and hence, and hence, the hence, the ships used to throw away the horses, used to throw away the horses ships, S-H-I-P-S ships used to throw away the horses due to weak wind system. Due to weak wind system. Weak wind system. There. Full stop. Therefore, it is known as horse latitudes. Known as horse latitudes. Next point. The horse latitudes show variation in the eastern and western parts. The horse latitude show variation in the eastern and western parts. Where the eastern parts where the eastern parts are more humid eastern parts are more humid can someone tell me why more humid? Eastern, western parts are more humid. Western parts of the oceans are more humid. Can someone tell me why? Warm ocean currents. Agar a subtropical high pressure belt mein hai, so yahan pe warm ocean currents hai. Ye zyada humid hai, western part. And the eastern part is dry. Kyunki? Cold ocean currents. And isi liye, aapne GS mein padha hai, the Deserts are always located on the western part of the continents. Kyuki, where there are cold ocean currents. Kyu, kyuki, eastern part of the oceans are dry. So, I got confused myself. You mean? The horse latitude show variation in the eastern and western parts, where the western parts over the oceans are more humid, are more humid. Bracket may due to warm ocean currents.
and the eastern part over the oceans eastern part over the oceans are cold and dry over the oceans are cold and dry due to cold currents due to cold currents full stop hence due to cold dry air masses cold dry air mass iske upar ka air kaise hoga cold and dry cold dry air mass the western part of the continents the western part of the continents in the subtropical high pressure belt in the subtropical high pressure belt are the regions of deserts are the regions of deserts you already know this hurricanes sahara desert sahara desert ke exactly opposite gulf of mexico pe pass hamesha there is an hurricane activity this is the same state getting it clear last point this zone is the zone of origin of this zone is the zone of origin of trade winds and westerlies this zone is the zone of origin of trade winds and westerlies clear upar jo ja rahi hai that is westerlies jo niche aa rahi hai that is the trade winds so aayegi towards the equator and then it will form at it cz fine third sub polar low pressure belt it is the located between 60 to 65 degree north and south it is dynamically induced it is dynamically induced zone of convergence of zone of convergence of warm westerlies and cold polar easterlies warm westerlies and cold polar easterlies next point very very important it has been your past year gs mein paper mein question also this belt is continuous in the southern hemisphere this belt is continuous in the southern hemisphere but in the northern hemisphere due to the dominance of land mass but in the northern hemisphere due to the dominance of land mass it 
it is broken it is broken full stop a permanent low pressure belt a permanent low pressure belt in the northern hemisphere is found only at Aleutian low and Icelandic low Icelandic low is found only at Aleutian low and Icelandic low. Finished. Now, what does it mean? It means that in the northern hemisphere, during the winter season, as the snowfall starts, due to extremely cold temperature, the whole region, subpolar low pressure belt wala region, also gets converted into high pressure, polar high pressure, because of a heavy snowfall. Except at Aleutian Islands. So where are these Aleutian Islands? Aleutian Islands are nothing but if you remember, we always make North America like this. These are Aleutian Islands. Because there is more of a maritime influence, sea ka influence, and Alaska warm current, here snowfall nahi hota. So this remains a low pressure. And Iceland, Greenland ke pas, because of Norwegian current. This becomes a, remains a low pressure. Fine. Southern hemisphere mein it is a permanent low pressure belt, a continuous line. If you remember yesterday's lecture, isotherms and isobars are more or less continuous. Pe, here it becomes Aleutian low and Icelandic low. Baki ka disappears. Baki ka region mein, if you remember current affairs, there is so heavy snowfall ki blizzard blows in this region. There is a cold waves in USA. Cold waves means obviously temperature decreases and it gets converted into high pressure. So what you have to remember, even in GS, it is given in NCRT also, your 11th standard, the subpolar low pressure belt is discontinuous in northern hemisphere. It is continuous in southern hemisphere. Why it is discontinuous? Because it disappears during the winter season from all the regions except Aleutian Islands, therefore it is known as Aleutian low, and Iceland, Greenland region, therefore it is known as an Icelandic low. Bas. Getting it? QAP also I had stressed this point. Prelims ka QAP, if you remember or no. So, uh, you were also in QAP? I had stressed on this point and a past year question we discussed here. Is this related? Next, polar high pressure belt. is found consistently throughout the year is found consistently throughout the year in the polar regions consistently throughout the year in the polar regions Full stop. Caused by subsidence of cold airs. Caused by subsidence of the cold airs. From above. From above. The subsiding air then flows on the surface as The subsiding air then flows on the surface as flows on the surface as cold polar easterlies. Flows on the surface as cold polar easterlies.
cold polar easterlies cold polar easterlies winds which come from east are easterlies understood i'm going bit technical सिर्फ समझो बाद में मुझे जरूरत पड़ेगी इसको यहां से एयर इज डिसेंडिंग देर फोर ग्राउंड पे देर इज अई प्रेशर यहां से पोलर ईस्टरली इज असेंडिंग वेस्टरली इज असेंडिंग यहां पे ग्राउंड पे देर इज अ लो प्रेशर एयर ऑलवेज विंड ऑलवेज फ्लोज फ्रॉम हाई प्रेशर टू लो प्रेशर एंड ड्यू टू कोरियल इज फोर्स इट विल बी रिफ्लेक्टेड टू द ईस्ट and because it is coming from the poles we are calling it as cold polar easterlies fine but yahan se nikal rahi hai winds yahan se air niche aa rahi hai so tell me will there be more air here or will there be less air here in the upper atmosphere over the poles less air tell me if you don't understand air is coming downwards so can i say there is a thinning of the air in this region getting it air is going upwards so can i say there is a piling up of the air in this region air jab pile ho jati hai to air jab thin ho jati hai to low pressure so upper air understanding so samajh mein aaya ye so jahan jahan ground pe there is a high pressure at the upper air there will be low pressure jahan jahan ground pe there is a low pressure upper air there will be high pressure so this results into thinning of an air low pressure conditions this thinning of an air sometimes directly settles down but nowadays due to global warming this regions are becoming very very warm जो यहाँ पे समर्स में टेम्परेचर विंटर में टेम्परेचर होना चाहिए था इट हैज बिकम वेरी वॉर्म यू रिमेंबर इन आवर डिस्कशन पोलर रीजन्स एंड ट्रॉपिक्स आर गोइंग टू फेस द ग्लोबल वार्मिंग दिस आर बिकमिंग वेरी वेरी वॉर्म एंड बिकॉज दिस बिकम्स वेरी वेरी वॉर्म ये एयर जो नीचे जानी चाहिए इट गेट्स अट्रैक्टेड इवन टिल हियर विच शुड गो स्ट्रेट डाउनवर्ड्स वेर इट गेट्स अट्रैक्टेड सम पार्ट गेट्स go straight downward some parts comes in this region and isi ko hum kahenge which started happening from this year in north america getting it polar vortex event air is getting attracted the air we should go straight down but wo dekhta hai are low pressure is there even in the temperate regions because jitna thandi mein wahan pe it should be the average cold which should have been maintained in that region that is not there because of global warming so this air starts going towards even that region and this is what is known as a polar vortex event and this is extremely cold air jab wo aayegi in the temperate latitudes it obviously will freeze bring the freezing temperatures and therefore there will be heavy snowfall ab jitna ye air yahan se niche jayegi उतना स्ट्रॉगर दिस एयर विल कम टूवर्ड्स हियर जितना द स्ट्रॉगर एयर कम्स टूवर्ड्स हियर उतना स्ट्रॉगर विल बी द पोलर वोटेक्स इवेंट एंड समटाइम्स अंडरस्टैंडिंग एवरी वन समाइम्स दिस पोलर वोटेक्स इवेंट when they they descend because ye pura thanda hai so this air when it descends ye aayegi through this gap and it will result into noida delhi ka abnormal temperature in winters this year there was so heavy snowfall in noida there was hail storms in delhi january this year this all is related to usa mein jab hota hai then it is known as polar vortex event india mein jab hota hai then it is known as extremely strong western disturbance nothing mechanism is same 
मैकेनिज्म इज सेम कोल्ड एयर क्यों आ रही है इस रीजन से हिमालयास के बाद में गैप है बिटवीन सुलेमान एंड किरतार रेंजेस विच इज नोन एज खाइबर पास रीजन एंड दैट इज इनफ फॉर सरफेस विंड्स टू कम टूवर्ड्स इंडिया गेटिंग इट so whenever you read in the newspaper ki there is a thinning up of the air is occurring etc yaad rakhna sir ne to kaha tha ki high pressure hai news keh raha hai ki thinning ho raha hai air they are referring to this part fine so due to global warming thinning is increasing you have they are referring to this part what which one this one polar vortex polar vortex is nothing but increase in the cold polar air which should descend here it is coming towards the lower latitudes why it is coming towards the lower latitudes just because koi bhi air flows from high pressure to low pressure so this air which should descend here will get attracted towards here why because ye zyada garam hai as compared to this So, ये बन जाता है हाई प्रेशर ये बन जाता है लो प्रेशर वी विल कम टू दिस अगेन ये हम टेक्निकली करेंगे पोलार वोटिक्स इवेंट्स दिस इज जस्ट एन आइडिया कि क्या हो रहा है पोलार वोटिक्स इवेंट्स फाइन विथ द प्रेशर बेल्ट्स easy topic except jet stream or also see when we say the winds we divide the winds into two three parts some of the winds are known as primary circulation or planetary winds planetary winds why planetary winds because they blow all along the planet anywhere so what are the planetary winds ye jitne bhi winds humne ki hai these are an example of planetary winds they blow all along the planet in the form of trade winds westerlies easterlies these are the planetary winds and this is also known as an primary circulation or winds of first order when the some primary winds are modified at a regional level some primary winds will be modified at the regional level trade winds ka direction change ho jayega wo equatorial westerlies ban jayegi ya southwest monsoon winds ban jayegi due to the shift of itcz etc they are known as seasonal or secondary circulation then isme hamara example is monsoon winds so that is why इसी के साथ साथ विल डू द इंडियन मॉनसून ओनली वेन वी डू द मॉनसून विंड फाइट एंड द थर्ड विंड विच इज लैंड एंड सी ब्रिज विच आर कॉज ड्यू टू लोकल लेवल चेंजेस इट हैज नथिंग टू डू द्लानी विंड्स एक्सेट्रा दे आर नोन एज लोकल विंड्स और दे आर नोन एज टर्शरी सर्कुलेशन एग्जाम्पल इसमें टेरबल विम विंड एंड टर्शरी सर्कुलेशन इज मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर जीएस 
ऑप्शनल में इतना ये नहीं जितना जीएस में पढ़ते हैं उससे भी लिख सकते हो आप चिनुक फॉन सिरोको मिस्ट्राल बोरा हरमटा These are the examples of the local winds. Winds of first order ka example is trade winds. Westerlies. And Easterlies. very simple topic if you understand very difficult topic if you don't understand winds now ye words i have westerlies easterlies what are this there is nothing but this direction mein wind is originating we give it the name if it is originating from west to east it is westerly if it is originating from east to west it is easterly fine it does not matter whether it is a surface wind whether it is a local wind etc वेस्टर्ली मतलब वेस्ट टू ईस्ट आ रही है वेस्ट टू वर्ड मतलब वेस्ट की तरफ आ रही है वेस्टर्ली मीन्स इट इज फ्लोइंग फ्रॉम वेस्ट टू ईस्ट नॉट वेस्ट वर्ड वेस्ट वर्ड मीन्स इट इज गोइंग टूवर्ड्स वेस्ट वेस्टर्ली मीन्स इट इज गोइंग टूवर्ड्स ईस्ट फ्रॉम वेस्ट टू ईस्ट सो कहाँ पे ओरिजिनेट हो रही है वेस्ट ईस्टर्ली मीन्स इट इज ओरिजिनेटिंग इन द ईस्ट दैट इज वाई वी सेड पोलार ईस्टर्लीस because it is originating from north east to south west we say south west monsoon is equatorial westerlies why because they come from west to east getting it and based on this sabse pehle direct questions here what are the different factors affecting winds दो आई विल गिव इट बट अगर टाइम मिला तो टाइम मिला तो i'll try to give you xerox only of this in the next class there are two booklets made simple series ka rupa publication ka so they are basically known as rupa made simple you, agar unke authors ka naam liya to koi bhi book wala kahega aisi book nahi hai hamare paas unko jab bologe ki rupa made simple chahiye so they will give you two booklets one is of human geography one is of physical geography you have pdf so you share it <coughs> clear hai pdfs except there is no content means acha acha this no i know the pages i'll just share the pages then then no need of buying physical or human if you if he has the pdf i'll give you the required pages because it becomes easy to take print out rather than giving the book for xerox fine so what are the different factors affecting wind one is the pressure gradient force that is the rate of change of pressure i'll quickly tell you first that is wind always flows from high pressure to low pressure 
and the pressure gradient force acts from high pressure to low pressure and therefore wind flows from high pressure to low pressure in this direction. That means if this is the if this is the equatorial low pressure belt wind should flow from the subtropical high pressure belt towards the equatorial low pressure belt from subtropical high pressure belt to the equatorial low pressure belt from subtropical high pressure belt to the polar subpolar low pressure belt from the subtropical high pressure belt to the subpolar low pressure belt and from polar high pressure belt to the subpolar low pressure belt in this manner fine that is can i say wind always flows perpendicular to the isobars pressure gradient force mein wind always flows perpendicular to the isobars agar baki ke conditions don't exist then only but there are some other conditions that exist that is the rotation of the earth and because the rotation of the earth fir se suno so can i say this is the direction of the pressure gradient force that is from high pressure to low pressure right wind always flows from high pressure to low pressure take this example forget baki ka example but koi bhi wind aise straight nahi jayegi because due to the rotation of the earth there is an imaginary force which applies perpendicular to the pressure gradient force and this force is known as coriolis force this is the pressure gradient force so wind flows from high pressure to low pressure but because the earth is rotating from west to east any object on this rotating earth is deflected to the right in the northern hemisphere is deflected to the left in the southern hemisphere getting it kahan pe zyada ho raha hai deflection equator ke paas ya poles ke paas poles ke paas the because the coriolis force is inversely proportional to the rotational speed of the earth since the rotational speed of the earth is maximum near the equator kaise lagega rotational speed of the earth maximum at the equator it is very simple you have to look at the earth from this angle if the earth is rotating and if this is covering the entire rotation if this place which is located at the equator is taking after 24 hours it is completing one circle coriolis force is maximum at the poles e rotational speed of the earth is maximum at the equator and therefore coriolis force is inversely proportional to the rotational speed of the earth now you see uh, here look at this angle if any place on the equator after 24 hours it will come back to its original position fine so if this is the earth and this is the place on the equator if we take this place a after 24 hours it will come back to its original position take any place near the poles after 24 hours this place b will come back to its original position isko bhi 24 ghante lag rahe 24 hours this is also going to take 24 hours which place is covering greater distance place a or place b place a is covering a greater distance if we take the top view of the earth not the side view side view say you won't understand the coriolis force place a is covering the greater distance place b is covering the lesser distance that means can i conclude that place a is moving at a great speed as compared to the place b therefore we say the rotational speed of the earth is greater over the equator and lesser over the poles fine so if understood this so if a person is wants to go from poles to the equator if a person wants to, to go from poles to the equator and where which is moving at a greater speed place a so person cannot go in a straight line because now it is moving person if it goes in a straight line place a to aage nikal gaya so a person will have to get deflected to the right hand side so we say coriolis force ke karan anything gets deflected to the right hand side samajh mein aaya 
if a person wants to go from place C to place D, imagine it is rotating. If it is straight, then place D will come out later. Because it is rotating at a great speed. So, person will have to get deflected to the which hand side? Left hand side. Direction of arrow, they go. This is what is the Coriolis force. So, that is why, and if a person wants to go from place A to place D ho gaya E or place D to place F. Usko deflection karne ki zarurat hai ya place E se usko A ke paas jana hai. He may go more or less straight. Place F se D ke paas jana hai. He may go more or less straight because yaha pe poore region mein rotational speed is high. Therefore we say Coriolis force is Now, a person wants to go from place A to place B, from place A to place B or from place F to place C, it will obviously move as per the northern and southern hemisphere. Matlab, usko left ya right mein jana padega, but if you try to understand the Coriolis from force from this angle, kabhi nahi samaj mein For the Coriolis force, you will have to look at this angle of the rotation of the earth. Getting it? We will have to look from this angle. Coming to our statement here. Now when we are considering the winds, I will come to the Coriolis force. First let us understand what is this winds. Because pressure gradient force wind ko is direction mein kheech raha hai, Coriolis force wind ko is direction mein kheech raha hai. So, in dono ke beech mein wind jayegi and the wind will get deflected to the in this and therefore any wind co, co, pressure gradient force is here Coriolis force is here so the wind will get deflected to the right hand side Coriolis force is here pressure gradient force in the southern, pressure gradient force is here. In the southern hemisphere, Coriolis force is in the left. This side mat banao. And therefore, the wind will get deflected to the we will call this winds as eastern. The knowledge of this wind was very much necessary for colonial powers and for the trades. England say, if you don't know this wind, you will land up in South America. But you have to come to India and China. You go to South America. You go to Central America, which was with Columbus. Columbus never discovered the USA, I told you that earlier. He discovered Central America. Fine? And because the knowledge of this wind was very much necessary, we will call Easter Liz as as trade winds. No need of this diagram, this, let's try to understand here. Pressure gradient force is acting in this direction, Coriolis force to the right hand side of this and therefore winds. to the left hand side of this and therefore the winds and we will call this winds as westerlies. Coming to oceanography, as the westerlies go to the southern hemisphere, Unka speed increases, they are known as roaring 40s, furious 50s, streaking 60s. Unka speed increases. As unka speed increases, deflection increases. Or ye ban jati hai geostrophic winds. I will come to that. Oceanography mein humne dekha west wind drift. Fine? And lastly, using the same logic.
easterly to avoid the confusion because it is moving from east to west to avoid the confusion we call this as polar easterly because there is one more easterly कोरियलिस फोर्स आप आराम से देख सकते हो टेक अ सी डी इफ यू एट योर हाउस घुमाओ उसको और उसके ऊपर स्केच पेन रखो इट विल इधर गेट डिफ्लेक्टेड टू राइट और टू लेफ्ट नदन हेमिसफेयर में है यू विल सी डिफ्लेक्शन मोस्टली टू द राइट टेक दैट सी डी सम टाइम इन योर लाइफ इन सदर्न हेमिसफेयर एंड सी द डिफ्लेक्शन इट विल बी टू द so one is the there are two forces have you understood the two forces pressure gradient force and coriolis force but this is not the only force there is one more force which acts only on the surface winds पीछे इसलिए बिकॉज इट रिड्यूसेज द स्पीड ऑफ द सर्फेस विंड्स इट रिड्यूसेज द स्पीड ऑफ द सर्फेस विंड्स सो ये तीन मेजर फोर्सेस गेटिंग इट चलो कोई नहीं इज इट विजिबल low pressure surrounding high pressure cyclones in northern hemisphere low pressure cyclones in southern hemisphere can i say this is anti clockwise and this is clockwise एंटी क्लॉकवाइज ऐसे घूम रहा है सॉरी दिस इज क्लॉकवाइज एंड दिस इज एंटी क्लॉकवाइज ऐसे घूम रहा है एंड ये ऐसे घूम रहा है दिस इज इन नदन हेमिस्फियर दिस इज इन सदन हेमिस्फियर टेल मी द रीजन Coriolis force applied. ये तो right में जा रहा है, left में जा रहा है. Hmm? This is clockwise in the southern hemisphere. This is right. That is anti-clockwise in the northern hemisphere. Coriolis force says the winds will get deflected to the right hand side in the Northern Hemisphere, but the cyclones to Southern Hemisphere mein right hand side ja rahe. Left hand side ja rahe. Right? Aise kyu ho raha hai? This is the fifth factor. Kabhi kabhi aise samay mere ko aise man karta hai. Welcome to geography optional bol ne. Right? This is what is the gradient wind. अब यू विल अंडरस्टैंड क्यों डरते हैं लोग आफ्टर डेविस एंड पेंक फ्रॉम दिस ऑप्शन ये एक और वैसा ही फैक्टर है बिकॉज ग्रेडियंट विंड डिपेंड्स अपॉन फ्रिक्शनल फोर्स कोरियोलिस फोर्स एंड प्रेशर ग्रेडियंट फोर्स का डायरेक्शन सो पहले इजी वाला पार्ट राइट दैट इज अगेन सिंपल कोरियोलिस फोर्स इन एक्शन एक बार खत्म होने के बाद यू विल अंडरस्टैंड दिस
I guess you had this question somewhere in the recent years itself. Open your past year questions and Look at 2017 ka paper. This is nothing but in difficult language, the factors that affect the winds. That is discuss the forces which govern the air movement on the earth's surface. Kuch nahi hai. It is just nothing but the factors that affect the wind. These are the four forces that govern the air movement on the earth's surface. Fir se wind mein se question 2018. Origin, progress, retreat of Indian monsoon and discuss its impact on the Indian economy. Fir se wind mein se question 2015. Every alternate year, can you see the trend? Explain the meridional circulation of the atmosphere and its importance on the world climate. The way we have drawn tropical cell, Hadley cell and the feral cell. Fir se 2014 mein question. Discuss the nature and the origin of Indian monsoon and the recent techniques of its production. Al Nino, La Nina, Indian Ocean Dipole. These are the recent techniques. 2014 may first say question. Discuss the salient features of Sirocco and Mistral. Ek temperature inversion may say question. Discuss dew point and various forms of condensation. First question, with the suitable examples, bring out the impact of local winds on the climate of an area. 13 may repeat, 14 may repeat. When say 11 may question, write a short note on the Rosby waves and jet streams. Frontogenesis may question, what is polar front? How does a cyclone develop in the regions of a polar front? Discuss the weather conditions associated with it. Write a short note on the inversion of temperature. Write a short note on atmospheric instability. How does climate change affect the urban areas? Fir se climate change, etc. Fir se 2007 mein question, 2008 mein question, local winds, monsoon pe. 2003 may question tricellular meridional circulation pe. So I'm not going much behind, but you can see areas both specific hai. except for Copan and Thorn White. Anybody with GS also can write these answers. Climate change, winds, factors affecting winds, temperature inversion. So that is why uh, to you to get selected in climatology, mein bar bar kahunga, don't see geomorphology jo padai nahi karta ho nahi Fine. Jo optional properly nahi karke jayega, wo geomorphology nahi lik paega. So he will target human geography and climatology. So to, and there are some people who will have the habit of taking very high marks in GS, 403, 404, 450. Unko competition se dur rakhne ke liye aapka ek hi sahara hai, geomorphology. Because geomorphology is one such topic, when you attempt that question, you get maximum marks, fine? You see your own reaction. When you were doing geomorphology, aisa lag raha tha sab kuch naya hai. When we started with climate and ocean, aray, ye to GS mein bhi pada hai, ye GS mein bhi pada hai. If the same examiner will go through the same, this thing. Wow, he understands geography. So coming to winds, <coughs> winds is defined as horizontal movement of air according to bears. According to Bayer, B Y E R. Wind is air in motion 
wind is air in motion usually measured usually measured only in horizontal component usually measured only in the horizontal component usually measured only in the horizontal component matlab only the horizontal movement of the air is known as wind this is so if you know bear ka definition of wind you know factors affecting movement of air matlab you know ning yahi ka hai fine conclusion mein aap likh sakte ho ki a convection and subsidence also affects the governing factors ha huh? wind is simply the air in motion usually measured only in its horizontal component i am giving the definition verbatim you can write in in your own language according to bear horizontal component of air in motion is known as wind or according to trevartha the father of climatology according to trevartha wind is an air moving in direction wind is air moving in direction which is essentially parallel with the earth's surface which is essentially parallel to the earth's surface अर्थ सरफेस को कौन सा पैरल होगा हॉरिजॉन्टल या वर्टिकल हॉरिजॉन्टल सरफेस पे सरफेस विंड्स अपर एयर पे एंटी ट्रेड्स या जेट स्ट्रीम्स सो बट इन दोनों में से एक डेफिनेशन आने देना द एयर मूवमेंट एयर मूवमेंट आर ऑफ टू टाइप्स vertical air movement vertical air movement known as currents known as currents is due to heating and cooling due to heating and cooling causing up drafts and down drafts up drafts and down drafts respectively अप ड्राफ्ट एंड ड्राउन ड्राफ्ट रिस्पेक्टिवली हीटिंग से अप ड्राफ्ट कूलिंग से डाउन ड्राफ्ट क्लियर नेक्स्ट वेल द हॉरिजोंटल मूवमेंट ऑफ द एयर इज ड्यू टू horizontal pressure gradient force b due to coriolis force due to frictional force 
एंड जो मैं साइक्लॉन्स का बता रहा था डी ड्यू टू So, what are the four factors that govern the air motion? These are the four factors: pressure gradient force, Coriolis force, frictional force, and centrifugal force. Centrifugal force means towards the center, yeah, away from the center, away from the center. Fine. And centripetal means. towards the center don't draw anything just tell me what does it mean bahar high pressure hai andar low pressure hai so which direction mein कोरियोलिस किस डायरेक्शन में प्रेशर ग्रेडियंट फोर्स विल अप्लाई आउटसाइड टू इनसाइड इन विच डायरेक्शन सेंट्री फ्यूगल फोर्स विल अप्लाई सेंट्री फ्यूगल फोर्स इज ऑलवेज टूवर्ड्स द सेंटर किस डायरेक्शन में कोरियोलिस फोर्स विल अप्लाई परपेंडिकुलर टू द perpendicular to the pressure gradient force this is pressure gradient force this is centrifugal force so wind aayegi coriolis force usko right ko mudne ke badle wo is direction mein mudegi aur center ki taraf jayegi fine ye wind is direction mein mudegi center ki taraf jayegi right hand side in the northern hemisphere to the pressure gradient force always to the right of the pressure gradient force and then center ki taraf mudegi and ultimately circulation ban jayega anti clockwise that is right if it is not visible what towards the center centrifugal means huh centri petal is i'm sorry sir 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 mai fir se confuse ho gaya i'm very sorry fir ye right kaise hua so this should have been high pressure taken two examples here there is a low pressure and surrounding this is an high pressure in this low pressure systems in this is the direction where the what is acting pressure gradient force this is the direction where centrifugal force is acting if it is in the northern hemisphere then is direction mein coriolis force will act if it is in the southern hemisphere then is direction mein coriolis force will act similarly in the cyclones this this is the direction where the pressure gradient force is acting this is the direction where the centrifugal force is acting and प्रेशर ग्रेडियंट फोर्स के राइट हैंड साइड में व्हाट विल एक्ट कोरियोलिस फोर्स लेफ्ट हैंड साइड में व्हाट विल एक्ट इन द सदर्न एमस्फियर कोरियोलिस फोर्स विथ दिस टू पॉइंट्स व्हेन द विंड इज विंड में ऑल दिस फोर्सेस आर गेटिंग अप्लाइड हम इसको कहेंगे एज ग्रेडियंट Which is an, which is an example is 
anticyclones and cyclones. When these three forces are acting, in a, when only two forces are acting, we will call this as geostrophic force. Okay. Understanding? Jab tino force act kar rahe, normal winds. Jab charo force act kar rahe, then gradient wind. And so if you have jab do forces act kar rahe, toh, geostrophic winds. Geostrophic winds are caused due to the balance of the pressure gradient force and the Coriolis force. Normal wind is acted upon generally by the horizontal pressure gradient force, Coriolis force and the frictional force. But kabhi kabhi when the low pressure or the high pressure centers are developed, low pressure and high pressure centers are developed. Low pressure center in the terms of cyclones, high pressure centers in the terms of anticyclones. Then there is a new force that either will pull the wind towards the center, yeah, will pull the wind away from the center and the final direction of the wind will be determined by the interaction of centrifugal force, whether it is acting in the same direction as the pressure gradient force or centrifugal force, whether it is acting in different direction as the pressure gradient force and Coriolis force. Frictional force may not play an important role because jitna zada differences between the high pressure and the low pressure, utna greater is the wind speed. Jitna greater is the wind speed, utna lesser is the frictional force. Getting it? Geostrophic winds is Coriolis forces direction mein hai, sorry pressure gradient forces direction mein hai, Coriolis forces direction mein hai. Frictional force absent hai. So, Coriolis force tries to balance the pressure gradient force. As the Coriolis force tries to balance the pressure gradient force, wind instead of moving straight starts to flow parallel to each other. We will come to this EHR cheese ahead. So, that is why it is a bit technical sometimes. Horizontal pressure gradient force high pressure to low pressure. So, can I say wind flows perpendicular to the isobars due to the pressure gradient force? So, there are two points here. Before I begin, tell me is it a wind deflecting force, pressure gradient force or wind generating force? Yeah, don't know wind always will flow from high pressure to low pressure. If there is no high pressure or low pressure on the land, there will be no wind. So, what is this now? Wind generating force and obviously direction to determine karega. So, first pressure gradient force, pressure gradient force is the force that causes wind moment is the force that causes wind moment. Force that causes the wind moment. This way wind generation, generating force. Next, wind always flows from high pressure to low pressure and always flows from high pressure to low pressure. Yaad rakhna gradient means rate of change or difference. Technically it means rate of change. Not ki yahan pe kitna high pressure hai, yahan pe kitna low pressure hai, it means kitna high pressure to low pressure kaisa change hote ja raha hai. Agar change bohat zada hai, that is ye agar high pressure hai or ye agar low pressure hai, change bohat zada hai. So, if we, I want to draw a mountain, this will be how the slope of a mountain will be, right? If the change is not great, this is high pressure and if this is low pressure and if I want to draw a mountain, this is how the mountain will be. Rate of change, it is not just the difference between high pressure and low pressure, it is the rate of change. Fine? This way, a diagram, we will see this diagram is used in the cold front and warm fronts like this. Triangle. Understanding? It is 
we draw a triangle or a mountain. So, jitna zada slope, utna greater is the speed of the river. Gradient is slope gradient. Jitna kam slope, utna less is the speed of the river. Isi liye, greater the pressure gradient, greater is the wind speed. Lesser the pressure gradient, lesser is the wind speed. Fine? Next. Pressure gradient determines determines wind direction, high pressure to low pressure, as well as wind velocity. Wind direction and wind velocity. Greater the pressure gradient wind direction and wind velocity greater the pressure gradient higher is the velocity higher is the velocity and vice versa and vice versa in the map in the map spacing of isobars spacing of isobars is used to determine spacing of isobars is used to determine the pressure gradient pressure gradient Tell me, closely spaced isobars, widely spaced isobars. Kiss me pressure gradient zada. Closely, 10 millibars, 20 millibars, 30 millibars. 10 millibars, 20 millibars. Fine, this is widely spaced. In the entire this region, till this region is 10 millibars. Uske baad will be 20 millibars. Yaha pe 10 to 20 is only this. Baki ka region is 20 to 30. So, closely spaced isobars. Means steep pressure gradient. Understand why we word the use the word steep instead of high. Dono use kar sakte. Steep because we make a mountain. Means steep pressure gradient. And therefore higher wind velocity. Higher wind velocity. Next. Wind, wind is wind direction is always perpendicular to the isobars. Wind direction is always perpendicular to the isobars. Wind direction is always perpendicular to the isobars. Next. Coriolis force. Coriolis force. An imaginary force. An imaginary force. That is caused due to. That is caused due to. The rotation of the earth is caused due to the rotation of the earth and which has effect on every moving object, not on the stationary object. Where aapko yahan se yahan jana hi nahi hai, to Coriolis force won't act. It will act only if you want to move from here to here, which has effect on every moving object. is known as Coriolis force. Before I go, technically kya hona chahi? Coriolis force, 
ya coriolis effect what is the right word technically there is no such force ye imaginary effect hai ki agar earth rotate ho raha hai and because the outer speed is greater to mujhe missile planes kis direction mein leke jana hai force matlab koi external object move nahi kar raha hai hum aisa soch rahe ki hame is direction mein move karna hai एंड जब हम प्लेन्स को रियोलिस इफेक्ट के हिसाब से चलाते हैं तो वी लैंड एट प्रॉपर डेस्टिनेशन व्हेन यू डोंट अप्लाई द कोरियोलिस इफेक्ट टू प्लेन्स और मिसाइल्स वो किसी और डायरेक्शन में निकल जाते हैं सो एक्चुअली इट इज नॉट अ फोर्स इट इज जस्ट एन इफेक्ट इसलिए हमने वर्ड यूज किया है इमेजिनरी राइट दिस इफेक्ट रिजल्ट फ्रॉम दिस इफेक्ट results from rotational results from difference in the rotational speed of the earth difference in the rotational speed of the earth stop the coriolis effect coriolis effect is inversely proportional to the rotational speed is inversely proportional to the rotational speed and as the rotational speed is greatest near the equator rotational speed is greatest near the equator we can say that coriolis force coriolis force is is zero or minimum near the equator zero और मिनिमम नियर द इक्वेटर मैं जीएस में कहता हूं एट द इक्वेटर जीरो इन द इक्वेटोरियल रीजन मिनिमम फाइव डिग्री नॉट टू फाइव डिग्री साउथ इट इज मिनिमम नेक्स्ट इनवर्सली प्रोपोर्शनल मतलब जितनी रोटेशनल स्पीड इंक्रीज होगी उतना कोरियोलिस फोर्स कम होते जाएगा तुम दो चीजें कंफ्यूज कर रहे हो हम कह रहे हैं ये रोटेशनल स्पीड ऑफ द अर्थ है इसके अपोजिट है कोरियोलिस इफेक्ट राइट कोरियोलिस इफेक्ट मतलब कितना डिफ्लेक्ट होने वाला है कितना नहीं एट द इक्वेटर और एट द पोल्स से इक्वेटर पे अर्थ इतना फास्ट घूम रहा है कि इस प्लेस से इस प्लेस में आने के लिए डिफ्लेक्शन की जरूरत नहीं है बिकॉज ऑल दिस रीजन विच आर नियर द इक्वेटर दैट इज जीरो टू फाइव डिग्री नॉर्थ एंड जीरो टू फाइव डिग्री साउथ दैट इज फ्रॉम ए टू बी यू डोंट हैव टू गेट डिफ्लेक्टेड सो वी से कोरियोलिस इफेक्ट इज मिनिमम बट डिफरेंस इन द रोटेशनल स्पीड इज एट द पोल्स सो इफ यू आर मूविंग एट ए विथ हायर स्पीड एंड द सी का पर्सन इज मूविंग एट लेसर स्पीड so from a to c ane ke liye you will have to get deflected so because the rotational speed of the earth is lesser near the poles you can see deflection bahut zyada hai because it is near the equator rotation deflection kam hai tum jo puch rahe ho wo hai wind velocity and the coriolis force jab velocity of any horizontal object is greater then deflection is greater wo ek alag factor hai Don't confuse the two factors. These are Coriolis force. Earth pe kahan pe zada hoga? At the equator, dekho deflection ki zarurat hi nahi. Poles, dekho deflection ki zada zarurat hai. This is what is meant by the statement. Understanding? Zero or minimum near the equator. Yaad rakhna ye cheez hai. Isiliye hum kehte hai deflection hoga hi nahi of the winds near the equator and in because of lack of deflection of the winds near the equator tropical cyclones will not originate 
For example, equatorial regions are very, very hot. So there will be a low pressure centers at the equator. But tropical cyclones ke liye abhi aapne dekha, kyu ho raha hai, forget about it. But abhi aapne dekha, wind has to get deflected towards the low pressure center. Winds have to get deflected. Winds have to get deflected. But near the equator, winds deflect in yogi. Kyu? Kyuki Coriolis force hai. Wo sidi chali jayegi. And therefore, Speed, wind ka speed mat socho Coriolis for ke saath pe. Earth ke rotational speed ke baare mein socho. Wind generate ho rahi hai due to high pressure and low pressure. Earth agar rotate ho raha hai to wind aise generate honi chahiye thi. Aise kyu ho rahi hai? Aise kyu ho rahi hai? Earth ka rotation kya hai? West to east. Right? Aise hai. Wind is like this, or all winds are like this? Fine. It has nothing to do with earth rotation. Winds have nothing to do with earth rotation. Winds are simply caused due to high pressure and low pressure. Winds are deflected due to Coriolis force. I have not written this in Coriolis force. It is a wind generating force. Wind generating force is only the pressure gradient force. Getting it? It is wind deflecting force. Kitna deflect hoga depends upon no. Again you are confusing. Kitna deflect hoga winds will depend upon whether the wind is in near the equator 0 to 5 degree or in the poles 60 to 5 degrees to 90 degrees. Yaha pe rotational speed kam hai earth ki, yaha pe rotational speed zada hai earth. Fine? Rotational speed ka or pressure gradient force ka lena dena hi nahi hai. Zada ho. Iska doubt is very common. Doubt ye hai ki jaha pe wind ka speed zada hai वहाँ पे कोरियोलिस फोर्स ज़्यादा लगेगा। Very right। If the velocity is greater, then deflection is greater, right? But deflection होगा कि नहीं, ये depend करेगा even on the rotation of the earth। सिर्फ velocity के ऊपर नहीं। और दूसरी question जो तुम्हारा है, wind की velocity equator पे ज़्यादा है या कम है? Winds है ही नहीं equator पे। That is why it is the belt of doldrums. Getting it? Winds hai nahi? Kabhi kabhi winds hai equatorial westerlies. Winds are not there. This is a very common doubt because yes, sabse confusing hai. Hum kehte hai ki rotational speed, Coriolis force zada hai, to speed of the wind is greater. Nahi. Speed of the wind is greater, to Coriolis force is greater. Haan. So, iska, this is a very common doubt in students. Pressure gradient force determines wind's velocity. Wind's velocity determines deflection. Matlab? Pressure gradient force will determine the speed of the wind. Speed of the wind will determine the deflection. If the speed is greater, deflection is also greater. But deflection is also determined by one more factor is latitudes. Understanding? It has nothing to do with the speed. Latitudes may, it is determined agar equator ke pass hai, to minimum deflection. Agar poles ke pass hai, to maximum deflection. Why? Because Coriolis force is inversely proportional to the speed of, rotational speed of the It is inversely proportional to the rotational speed of the earth. This factor and this factor are totally independent. What you are doing, you are confusing between these two factors. Ye factor totally independent hai, ye factor totally independent hai. Agar equator pe speed bhi bohat zada hai wind ki, fir bhi Coriolis force zero hi rahega because the dominant factor is rotational speed of the earth. If the rotational speed of the earth is greater, no deflection. If the rotational speed of the earth is very slow, deflection. 
it has nothing to do with the speed of the winds. Understanding? Your doubt will get clear in the next paragraph. Understanding this? Rotational speed of the earth is maximum near the equator, is there? Coriolis force is zero. Isle in spite the speed of the winds being greater, near the equator deflect in yoti. And therefore, equator pass kabi tropical cyclones will never originate. Getting it? Coriolis force is directly proportional to Ab Samaj Mayaga his doubt. The Coriolis force is directly proportional to first horizontal velocity of moving body horizontal velocity of moving body horizontal velocity of moving body means nothing but speed so if speed is greater then maybe deflection will be greater. Understanding? It is inversely proportional to the rotational speed of the earth. It is directly proportional to the horizontal velocity of a moving body. That moving body can be ocean current, that moving body can be wind, that moving body, body, body can be ballistic missile, that moving body can be plane. Koi bhi. Understanding? Second, mass of the moving body. Mass of the moving body. And third, sign of latitudes. Sign of latitudes. Is ka matlab? Sign zero, zero degree latitude. Sign 90, 90 degree latitude. Sign 20, 20 degree latitudes. 0 degree latitudes pay no deflection, 90 degree latitudes pay maximum deflection. Next point, because of this the Coriolis force, because of the, this the Coriolis force. bracket ye bhi rakhna coriolis force ka dusra naam fell slow is maximum near the poles is maximum near the poles third point ke saath saath continuation mein ye point hai sign of latitudes ke saath is maximum near the poles but is zero at the equator. Is zero at the equator. And last point, Coriolis force affects only direction. Coriolis force affects only direction. Ye dimag mein dal do and not speed. Pressure gradient force both direction and speed. Coriolis force only direction. But because it is proportional to the horizontal velocity of a moving body, if speed bada, to deflection badega. Understanding? Samaj me aara hai? Cori Coriolis force affects only direction, never the speed. 
Pressure gradient force affects both speed and direction, but Coriolis force is directly proportional to speed and if the speed bada to deflection padega. Speed kam hua to deflection kam hoga. So speed badta hai of westerlies, is the surface layer is deflected 75 degrees to this of the oceans. But subsurface layer mein friction jada hai, usme deflection kam hota hai. Uske niche ke layer mein aur deflection kam hota hai. Uske niche ke layer mein aur deflection kam hota hai. And ultimately this results into Yehi toh humne padha tha. Surface layer maximum deflect hota hai. Kyunki direct wind ke speed ke saath saath ho ja raha hai. Subsurface layer is not moving with the wind speed. So, this is the deflection of the deflection. The deflection of the deflection is less. So, the total water mass goes 90 degrees to this. Third. Frictional force. Frictional force. Frictional force. Frictional force acts at near at or near the earth's surface. At or near the earth's surface and is confined only to is confined only to few thousand meters. confined only to few thousand meters. Matlab it is not going to act on the after some two thousand or three thousand meters. It is confined only to few thousand meters. Matlab it is not going to act on which winds? anti trades pe act karega? Nahi. Jet streams pe act karega? Nahi. Next. Frictional force Before writing, tell me, can I, should I say changes the speed of the wind, slows the speed of the wind and speed of the wind slow ho gai to deflection kam ho ga. So can I say frictional force not only affects the wind speed but also its direction. Deflection determines the direction. Speed kam ho gaya to deflection kam, deflection kam to direction change. So the frictional force slows the wind speed slows the wind speed and hence hence changes the direction changes the direction bracket mein yaad rakhna frictional force isi liye will reduce the Coriolis force. Frictional force will reduce the Coriolis force. Next point, frictional force, frictional force is greater over the land because of irregularities and roughness. Frictional force is greater over the land because of irregularities and roughness. While it is lesser over the oceans. While it is lesser over the oceans. And therefore, in the southern hemisphere, in the southern hemisphere, wind direction, wind speed and deflection both increases. In the southern hemisphere, wind speed and deflection both increases. 
well speed and deflection both increases well speed and deflection both increases hence any surface wind any surface wind will be governed by all the three forces any surface wind will be governed by all the three forces will be governed by all the three forces giving rise to the resultant wind direction giving rise to resultant wind direction giving rise to resultant wind direction as shown in the diagram below giving rise to resultant wind direction as shown in the diagram below dekho had there been no this line frictional force to coriolis force would have acted perpendicular to the wind direction but because of the frictional forces these two forces become more or less perpendicular to each other coriolis force and frictional force and it does not remain properly perpendicular to the pressure gradient force so kya hota hai if this is the point of contact if this is high pressure 1020 millibars and if this is low pressure 1000 millibars this is the direction of pressure gradient force this is the direction of frictional force this is the direction of coriolis force and therefore the surface wind ka direction will be in this direction ये तीनों रिजल्टेंट फोर्स एक दूसरे को मोर और लेस परपेंडिकुलर एक्ट करते हैं प्रेशर ग्रेडियंट फोर्स का कभी डायरेक्शन चेंज नहीं होगा कोरियोलिस फोर्स परपेंडिकुलर होगा प्रेशर ग्रेडियंट के फाइन बट फ्रिक्शनल फोर्स रिड्यूस करेगा कोरियोलिस फोर्स को दैट इज डिफ्लेक्शन को इसीलिए ये तीन फोर्सेस ऐसे एक्ट करेंगे अभी नहीं समझ में आएगा नेक्स्ट टॉपिक में समझ में आएगा डायग्राम हाँ हाँ तो प्रेशर ग्रेडियंट फोर्स एंड कोरियोलिस फोर्स ही रहेंगे अगर फ्रिक्शनल फोर्स जीरो है हैव यू ड्रॉन दिस डायग्राम फर्स्ट ड्रॉ दिस डायग्राम आई टेल यू वॉट इज दिस क्योंकि वो सिर्फ साइक्लोन्स एंड एंटी साइक्लोन्स में ही एक्ट करेगा सेंट्रिफ्यूगल फोर्स अवे फ्रॉम द सेंटर फाइन अवे फ्रॉम द सेंटर यहाँ पे सेंटर ही नहीं है सेंटर नहीं है ना ये आईसो बार है स्ट्रेट लाइन है सेंटर मतलब गोल सो so, इसलिए सेंट्रिफ्यूगल फोर्स कहाँ एक्ट करेगा वेन दर इज अ लो प्रेशर सेंटर साइक्लॉन और वेन दर इज एन हाई प्रेशर सेंटर एंटी साइक्लॉन कहाँ पे है सेंटर वो सेंटर नहीं वो पॉइंट है जहां से विंड जा रही है अवे फ्रॉम द सेंटर एक्ट कर रहा है तो कौन से डायरेक्शन में इस डायरेक्शन में या इस डायरेक्शन में या इस डायरेक्शन में ये तीनों पे तो सेंट्रिफ्यूगल फोर्स जैसे ही तो काम कर रहे हैं सेंट्रिफ्यूगल फोर्स कब काम करेगा जब सेंट्रिपिटल फोर्स होगा तब तभी काम करेगा ना सेंट्रिफ्यूगल फोर्स सेंट्रिफ्यूगल इज अवे फ्रॉम द सेंटर टेक एन एग्जांपल ऑफ वॉशिंग मशीन स्वर्कुलर है कपड़े डाल दिए आपने उसमें 
जब तक मशीन चालू नहीं करोगे तब तक कपड़े वैसे ही रहेंगे जैसे ही मशीन चालू करोगे ड्रम विल स्टार्ट स्पिनिंग एज द ड्रम स्टार्ट स्पिनिंग देन सेंट्रीपिटल एंड सेंट्री फ्यूगल फोर्स ही एक्ट करना शुरू करते हैं सेंट्री फ्यूगल फोर्स कपड़ों को सेंटर से दूर खोचेगा उसके बाद सेंट्री पीटल कपड़ों को अंदर खींचेगा कपड़े ऐसे 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 धुले जाएंगे मशीन बंद करोगे सेंट्री फ्यूगल एंड सेंट्री पीटल फोर्स ओनली एक्ट ऑन रोटेटिंग ऑब्जेक्ट जब आप मेरी गो राउंड में जोर से घूमते हो व्हील में गर, गिरने का कभी डर नहीं होता बिकॉज बोथ द फोर्सेस आर बैलेंसिंग इच अदर जब उसका स्पीड कम होता है तो फिर आपको गिरने का डर होता है क्योंकि दोनों फोर्सेस गायब हो जाते हैं अंडरस्टैंडिंग सो कभी एक्ट करेगा जब कोई भी रोटेटिंग ऑब्जेक्ट है साइक्लॉन इज अ रोटेटिंग ऑब्जेक्ट दिस इज नॉट अ रोटेटिंग ऑब्जेक्ट इतना बड़ा लिखने से अच्छा एग्जाम में जस्ट राइट फैक्टर्स दैट गवर्न द एयर मूवमेंट दिस जस्ट फॉर यू टू अंडरस्टैंड आई हैव रिटन वैसे एग्जाम के लिए Welcome to that. क्या होगा मैं फ्रिक्शन आई कम टू दैट तुम्हारा डाउट ये अगर फ्रिक्शन फोर्स कम होते गया एंड जीरो होते गया तो क्या होगा आई कम टू दैट है फिनिश ड्रॉइंग दिस नाउ हिज डाउट इज वॉट विल हैपन इफ द फ्रिक्शनल फोर्स बिकम जीरो सो देर आर टी थ्री फोर्सेस प्रेशर ग्रेडियंट फोर्स का डायरेक्शन हमेशा सेम रहता है इट विल ऑलवेज फ्लो फ्रॉम हाई प्रेशर टू लो प्रेशर इट विल नॉट चेंज विथ स्पीड और एनीथिंग एक फ्रिक्शनल फोर्स है एक कोरियोलिस फोर्स है एंड देर फोर दिस इज द डायरेक्शन ऑफ द सर्फिस मूव नाउ इफ द कोरियोलिस फ्रिक्शनल फोर्स बिकम जीरो देन दो ही फोर्सेस है वन इज द फ्रिक्शनल फोर्स सॉरी वेन द वन इज द प्रेशर ग्रेडियंट फोर्स and this rise the coriolis force and therefore ideally humne starting mein likha tha coriolis force will always act perpendicular to the pressure gradient force so this should be the wind direction but ab wind ka speed badhega wind will start flowing with more speed wind ka speed badhega to wind ka deflection increase hoga as wind ka deflection increase hoga coriolis force इंक्रीज हो जाएगा फिर से विंड का जितना डिफ्लेक्शन इन स्पीड इंक्रीज होगा उतना कोरियोलिस फोर्स इंक्रीज होते जाएगा एंड अल्टीमेटली देयर विल कम अ टाइम व्हेन द कोरियोलिस फोर्स विल बी इक्वल बट अपोजिट टू द प्रेशर ग्रेडियंट फोर्स एंड इन दिस केस विंड विल फ्लो पैरेलल टू द आइसोबार्स जिसको हम कहेंगे why because jet streams are generally 6 to 14 kilometers away from the ground which means there is no frictional force understanding the speed increases 
Coriolis force increases. Speed increases, Coriolis force increases. <coughs> it increases to such an extent that the both the forces try to balance each other. Don't draw this. There is a separate topic, geostrophic winds. And this is not the diagram. Diagram is stages of geostrophic winds. So, but don't draw this diagram. It will come with each and every point. Point number one, point number two, point number three, point number four. Second example of a geostrophic wind is oceanography. Where it is? polar region, north may or southern hemisphere, only southern hemisphere, because of the dominance of oceans, Coriolis force becomes zero. Centrifugal force, centrifugal force is applicable only in the cases of circular isobars. These are the circular isobars. In the circular isobars, matlab, pura ye center high pressure ka hai, pura ye center low pressure ka hai. Abhi tak humare isobars were parallel, never circular only in the case of circular isobars. That is in the case of cyclones and anticyclones. And aage likho, refer gradient wind. Refer the topic gradient wind. gradient wind may he apply karay. So I'll stop here. Are you ready to come tomorrow? Phir mein weekday mein kisi ek din chutti de dunga. Right? Because jab tak peet thik hai, mere ko khich ne do. Ek din jhatka to lagne wala hai. But still you can see, achche doctor ko milne ka fayda is, within three days I am getting the effect. I should thank Chaitanya sir, if he doesn't come, then my tongue will fall. I'll mail you.